name is Makassi, and today we're talking about part two of my Rick Owens Bauhaus jumpsuit review. If you want to hear my intro, outro, the material, a little bit of my opinion about it, watch the other video. For this particular video, we're only going to be covering the top half of the flight suit, what wearing it is like, a little bit more of my opinion that I hadn't mentioned in the last video, and just some random thought here and there. Please continue to be on Farfetch, continue to shop, Essence, whatever you want, just side by side this video. I do reward the viewer who give their full attention to my video, but when I write my script, I write with the intention that people will not give me all of their attention. So hopefully I, hopefully I execute that thought because thinking is just one thing execution is everything okay so quick note so one of the things that has kept me from getting a pair of jumpsuit for the longest time was the fact that i thought it wouldn't look good on me because i'm not skinny skinny if you saw it on the runway tyrone all the other model omar like all of those guys are very skinny but i'm not i'm not fat fat but i'm not skinny either if a regular is here skinny is here fat is here, I'm somewhere on the chubby side, but I'm okay with that. I don't have the worst of body, just not the best. But now that I've owned these, now that I've worn these out for a month or two now, I love it. I believe that it looks great on me. You can disagree and the whole blah, 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 blah. We can have a dialogue about it, but the only opinion that matters is mine with regard to how I look in this jumpsuit. I'm gonna strut my shit, you know? By the way, that just, that's how you should feel about everything. I know that when I post these videos or when you and I post photos on Instagram, Twitter, whatever, wherever you post your photo, we are kind of inviting strangers to comment and you know, not everyone's going to get your interest. If you ask somebody to give their opinion about hockey and they don't care about hockey, they will say, what the fuck? That's such a boring sport. You score less than three points a game. That's so boring. But then if you ask somebody who's passionate, they will give you like an extended answer. The point is your opinion should only be the one that matters with regard to how you feel and how you look in a particular garment. If you are okay with it, everything is fine. Just ignore all the other noises, no matter how negative, no matter how positive. Your opinion is the only one that should matter the most. One of my friends have said whenever they talk to me, it feels like they're talking to a therapist. I am, I am a bit TED talk -y. I understand that, but I'm only spouting positive stuff, you know. When I start spouting negative stuff, you can tell me to shut up and I'll listen. I'm gonna wear these with the confidence of when Tyrod and Rick themselves wear these, you know. I, I, I lack a lot of things, but confidence is not one of them. Okay, so detail. This Bauhaus flight suit is full length. First of all, I have never owned any one-piece garment. It is something new to me. My first concern was, how hard is it to go to the bathroom? Because I remember in high school back in 2014, 2015, rompers were getting really, <clears throat> excuse me, rompers were really getting popular at my school and all the girls were talking about like, when they go to the bathroom, they're essentially naked because they have to take the top half off. Public bathroom in America, there's a giant hole at the bottom, a giant hole on the top. Somebody could just sneak over. So imagine if they just sneak over and they see me naked taking a dump. So that was the thought I had prior to getting this and it's it's confirmed I tried, you know, I tried going to the bathroom and it's in my own house without a shirt and it just, you have to take the whole things off. Everything's going to be at ankle length when you're taking a dump. So yeah, you're, you're never going to catch me outside without a shirt underneath, no matter how hot it is. And after wearing it for a month or two now, I love it. I feel great. I feel incredibly confident. And I've been slowly getting into um, F1 and wearing this jumpsuit makes me feel like I'm going to drive it because essentially that's what they're wearing too. It's fun. I, I like F1 a lot. One of the things that held me back was in the beginning, I grouped F1 with NASCAR and NASCAR is super boring. Just going around in circle like that meme of the piglet running around the pig mother. It just, it's super boring. But with F1, there are sharp turns. F1 is far superior and it's a lot shorter. NASCAR, dude, 500 laps, that's insane. Most F1 is just 50, 60 laps. It's doable, it's watchable. Anyway, fooling, getting off topic. I, I love it. And I typically wear these with my KISS boots. You might sometimes catch me with the Zoo boots or my PL2 if my feet have been hurting from work or my back has been hurting and I need more support. When you wear this as a jumpsuit, they look amazing with the KISS boot. They don't look that good with anything else. They look great with my black pair, but I bet they look even better with my white pair, but the white KISS boots are currently in Munich right now. I'm slowly moving some of my stuff there because I'm hoping to be able to move to Munich 
in early next year. The next detail I want to talk about, the Bala zipper, which runs all the way from the crotch area to the neck. I love it. I wish it was a bit longer. We'll talk about that later, but I wish it was a bit longer. I do love it. If I ever become like an artist that works with something dirty like stone, clay, or paint, I will make this jumpsuit my uniform. Oh, I'm working extra hard today. Let's zip it up all the way. I want to protect myself. I don't want the paint to get into my bottom layer. Oh, it's just a nice day of just cleaning the edges, putting some finishing touch. I'll wear this as a trouser and with my t-shirt underneath. It's just the thought of that alone, it's, it's so versatile. I love it. I love the fact that this piece is a multi-functional piece. You can wear it as a trouser, you can wear it as a jumpsuit. It's amazing. Or, you know, if I ever open a bakery slash a clothing store, which is a dream of mine because my partner is a pastry chef and, you know, I, I think I'm fairly knowledgeable when it comes to clothes. So I think that's doable. And if I were to open that, I would make all of my employees, including myself, wear these Bauhaus jumpsuit as a uniform and then you can wear either the geo basket or the kiss boots employee's choice imagine walk into a bakery and everyone is wearing kiss boots and Rick, ba Rick Owens Bauhaus jumpsuit you would want to come back you would want to take photo you want to tell your friends all about it, you know all of us fashion nerds when we see other fashionable places or other fashionable people in public we get really amazed because it's such a small community but it's a very enthusiastic community make it onto those instagram pages that post about high fashion Rick Owens, avant-garde that'll be free free publicity and then if any of the larger magazine like vogue gq id harper bazaar if they catch on even more publicity and i believe i can run a successful business with my skill and knowledge at manipulating people or as the pc term is called marketing and, you know, a little bit of nudging, a little bit of psychology with regard to the interior design, the choice of color, the store layout, the prices, the location, adding a few small distinguishable, whether it's music or items to make the consumer or the customer remember you because with the clothing and bakery, millions, millions of competitors. So, you know, you can, you gotta be able to distinguish yourself from the others. And then I would work my way up to collaborating with a few artists local to help the, to ask them to design like merch for our store. We can sell that, you know, like Bodega. They have their own merch concepts. They have their own merch. And then if you get bigger, you collaborate with bigger brand, move on to bigger things, you know. But I do have a lot of plans, but talk is cheap. Talk is just talk. Execution is everything. Again, my partner's a pastry chef, so she can handle the pastry aspect, the bakery aspect. I have a degree in business. I can take care of the business. I think I'm fairly knowledgeable with clothes. I can handle all of that. Yeah, I don't know how we got so off topic. <laughs> okay, huh? Jumpsuit, my first boiler suit. And, you know, I love it. It makes me feel super, uh, what's the word? Super fashionable. You know, there are a few garments in my closet that makes me feel like I'm really, really into this fashion shit, you know? These jumpsuit, the kiss boot, the Klaus jacket, the Bodie jacket, the windbreaker, the Hickoville, my doll jacket, the banana pants, the Gath Bala pants, all of these makes me feel like I'm really into fashion, makes me feel like I'm wearing something that I'm very proud to be seen in. And if someone were to ask me, I'll be very proud to answer, oh, I'm wearing Rico and oh, I'm wearing Bodie. Here's how you can get it. Here's their story. I think a lot of time, high-end fashion brand, they forget about the aspect about how a piece of clothing can make a consumer feel, can make me feel, can make you feel. A lot of the time with big fashion brands, they, they just focus on the runway, they focus on the marketing, they focus on the revenue, which I understand, but they forget the roots of it all, which is about the clothes. How does the clothes make the consumer feel? Will, it, will, you, will the clothes you design make the consumer feel strong, confident, free, relaxed? How, what, what are you aiming for? But I think oftentimes they're forgotten. Clothes is kind of secondary or third, like it's an afterthought. Take 
Take Dior for example, they will always have amazing set because they're backed by LVMH. They will always have celebrities and people with influences in the fashion world sitting front row because of the connection with LVMH. They have the money for that. Their marketing budget is crazy high. This just means that a lot of the important people will be there. The, the global ambassador, the friends of the house, celebrity that are currently trending or celebrity with high or good Q scores. So all of that is amazing. And then when the clothes actually come out, it just, it's incredibly bland. It's uninspired clothes that just feel lackluster. Clothes that feel as though they were designed by a committee with the goal of going viral, with the goal of the clothes that just being a source of one of their revenue streams. Another good example is with the Caperni. I don't know if, that, if I'm pronouncing it right, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, the Bella Hadid spray painted dress. Now be honest with me. Did you, if you watch that show, did you remember any other look? Anything? Did you remember any tangible, wearable clothes from that collection? Because I looked, I researched it, not that deeply because I'm not too familiar with Caperni and it's not really my realm of fashion, but I don't believe that dress was ever for sale. So it was just, the goal of that was just have a viral moment to have people know the name of Caperni. Because I will admit, Prior to that, I didn't know who they are. So they are successful in that viral moment. But was there any look? Did, did the viral moment translate into any sales? Because you can have people talking, you can have people online talking about you, but if that doesn't translate to sales, to money, it's pointless marketing. It, you spend so much money on this one singular moment, but that doesn't translate to any revenue. So is it really worth it? And if my assumption is correct that most of you, including me, don't even know any other looks they had and didn't buy anything, but we just liked the moment. Was it really worth it? And you know, okay, I will admit it's a very fashion forward moment because the fabric is experimental. I believe the fabric was called Fabricant. What we done for Copernic is like using a formulation that is based of cellulose. Through the process of spraying, it comes an instant non-woven fabric, something as like this material. Oh wow! The feeling is amazing because every every model they all feel dress but naked at the same time. For an experimental fabric, I commend them for that. But was it wearable? Was it sold to the masses? The answer is no. So let's look at Rick Owens' Edfu collection. Do you see all of these looks? Do you see these look with the transparent garment? That is in fact leather. It, it is called Apparation Leather and it was developed by Echo Leather, which I believe is based out of the Netherlands. Oh, but you didn't see the, uh, the uh. translucent leathers that we're doing. That's leather? Yeah, I feel it. Oh wow, the heaviness is surprising. The leather looks amazing. I am currently in the process of writing a script about it, but I can't continue until I acquired one of the items that uses the apparition leather because I want to know what it feels like. I want to know the durability. I want to know how it will react to daily wear and tear. For that Rick and show, all of these products with the experimental material, they were sold to the masses. I like the idea that whatever you put on the runway, you're going to sell it. Whatever I see on the runway, it's going to be seen on the racks. And Rick Owens agree with me on this. Peter Doe, uh, Yoji, Ray, all of Ray crazy shape stuff, you will see them on regular consumer. You will see them in the street because they make them. If you believe in the garment enough to put on the runway, you also have to believe in it enough that the that the consumer will buy. So you have to make it, you have to sell it. You can't just put it on the runway and not sell it and just have a big moment. You're a clothing company. The runway is to show off the clothes that you're gonna sell to the masses in six months. I think most fashion designers forget about that because they care so much about the viral moment. They care so much about marketing. I really need to stay on topic. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, where were we? Uh, Rick Owens Bauhaus jumpsuit. Okay, so what's the next? Uh, low rise. Um, okay, not low rise. It's a mid rise. It's about like a 10 to 13 rise, which is decent. It's not. <coughs> it's not the worst thing in the world, but I prefer my rise to be about 15 to 17. And the rise is only a problem when you wear a jumpsuit. So for example, when you stand up and sit down, because since it's a singular unit, every time you move something, the rest of the body moves. But if this were to be a jacket and a trouser, 
there will be that separation. So when you move, when you stand up, the jacket doesn't move, but since it's a singular object, you move something, it moves with you, the whole thing. And it becomes a problem when you sit down, stand up, so you just have to situate yourself. What this purchase has taught me is that I should stop messing around with women's um, bottoms, trousers. I should only mess around with the jackets because common sense would say, not common sense. At first I thought, okay, it's a unisex product, so it must be the same as the men. But I forgot that they probably adjust it a little because women don't have penises, so they don't need that high or rise so they can afford to keep it short. But that thought came after I purchased the item. I don't know, it just, I wasn't thinking, I, I wasn't thinking, I was just excited to get it. And when I saw the price was in my price range, I was just so happy. I was like, okay, it's a size 48. I got it uh, two size bigger than my old one. It's gotta fit me. And it does, but it just, it's a mid rise instead of high rise, which I believe the men is high rise because if you look at how my friend wears it, my friend Swan, you can see that it looks high rise. Like you can see that there's a lot of space in the crotch area. The flight suit gathers on the waist with an elasticized waistband. This detail doesn't really affect when one is jumpsuit. However, if this would have drawstring, it would have played a role. I do like the fact that it is elasticized. So let's compare it to the Tom Brown and the Prada. We'll put it on the screen. With the Prada and the Tom Brown, whatever size you get, you're kind of stuck with it because it's not elasticized. So if you eat too much, you know, if you gain some weight, you will feel different. Whereas with the Rick Owen, since it's elasticized, you, you're, you're given a bit of free space. You know, you can gain some weight, lose some weight, and it still fit you. And there was this one incident about two weeks ago. Uh, if you don't know, I love lobster. I love the Chinese dish, the lobster with ginger. <laughs> So I had my family order like three dishes just for me and I ate that for like a week. So whenever I have that dish, I just eat a lot. So I was eating that in the restaurant and then, you know, just stomach gets bigger after a big meal. So then it was just normally, okay. If I were to wear the banana trouser to that dinner, I would have had to unbutton it. But since this jumpsuit is elasticized, I never felt like it was getting more uncomfortable. It was always comfortable. Um, the main long zipper, the bala zipper, I, I touched upon it a bit earlier, but I wanted to talk a bit more. So on this side is the Bauhaus jumpsuit. On this side is the Klaus jumpsuit. This is the Klaus detail with the V-neck. So the problem with the V-neck is that, so I plan on wearing my jumpsuit as the base layer in the winter when it gets really cold. And with the Klaus, you can only zip it up so far because although it may look like you can zip it all the way around your neck, but you know, your big torso, yeah, your upper body, your neck, your head, it's gonna be in the way. So you can only zip it up so far. So in the winter, a lot of air is gonna flow through. And, but both of these are still far superior to the Tom Brown or the Prada because the exposed zipper really adds a level of, a level of subversiveness to the garment because, you know, the common sense would say you should hide your zipper you know you should be, it look it should look seamless like the Prada or Tom Brown but without the long zipper it kind of doesn't dictate or indicate that this is in fact a jumpsuit if you look from afar it just looks like somebody is wearing a very well fitted trousers and jacket that it just connect perfectly but the zippers on the Rick Owens, it indicates that this is a pair of jumpsuit. I can say with 100% certainty, if the Bala zippers, the exposed zipper would, would not to be there, I would, or I would probably not get this jumpsuit because it would feel incomplete. And when I do wear this as a jumpsuit, I always zip it up all the way. I don't think it looks that good like halfway or like exposed the upper. It looks a bit sloppy, but in a bad way. And you know, after wearing this jumpsuit, I can relate to women a lot better. Women, if you wear rompers in the summer, I feel your pain. When you go to the bathroom, you're essentially naked in that lack of privacy bathroom that American bathrooms are known for. And you know, I also wear kiss boots, so I know exactly how you feel when you wear heels, you know. Us women, we gotta band together. We gotta stay strong. Fight these men, you know. High neck that's secure with a tap and snap. So you get four snap button closures on the neck. I typically only close the outer. I can close all four, but I like my stuff a bit loose. I, I don't like feeling too claustrophobic. Yeah, I had to take the jacket off. It's just getting too hot in my room. But yeah, I like this a lot. I like this better than the clouds because the clouds on top of you not being able to zip it up all the way, you don't get the snap button closure on your neck, which is, 
will be a lot better in the winter for me. So that was one of the main things as to why I wanted this version instead of the Klaus version. Vertical and zip pockets on the left chest. So the size of the pocket is incredibly generous. You can fit two whole water bottles in there, which is just huge. It's incredibly useful. Whenever I wear the jumpsuit, my phone, my wallet, my AirPod go straight in there, zip it up. I feel incredibly secure because it's close to me. I have anxiety, so I'm always tapping on my pocket before I leave one setting for another. On top of the functional aspect, aesthetically, it looks great. I'm gonna make a prediction. I believe for the next season, I believe when Rick does release these jumpsuit again, I think he's gonna do the fog pocket, which is on the jacket that I was wearing earlier. I'll put it on the bureau right now. He loves those fog pockets. It's, uh, the fog pockets are on his tablet coats, which he loves. I like it too. It's unique, it's new, but it's concealed, so you don't get that silver hardware detailing. So I, if Rick, the team, if you are doing the fog pocket, please just consider adding zippers just to show the opening of the fog pocket. It would add character, just like how the zippers on this gives the jumpsuit a bit more of a lively look to it. I hope that makes sense. Honestly, I do wish that I had two two pockets, not just one on the left. I wish it had on both sides. I think that would have been nice, even if I'm not gonna use both. Aesthetically speaking, more silver hardware is gonna look better. Long sleeve. The sleeve on the slim side, which give these jumpsuit a really nice look. It's not too skinny, it just, it's perfect. And the only downside, if you wanna call it a downside, is that you can't put a sweater or a hoodie underneath, but common sense would tell you that like, you know, if you're gonna wear a hoodie, you should take the top half off and then put the hoodie on. You shouldn't try to put a hoodie underneath and then wear it with the, you, you know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. Like aesthetically, practically, it doesn't make sense. Everything else, everything else is perfect. I love that it's slim, but not too slim. It feels and looks great. Elasticized cuffs at the end of the long sleeve. I don't particularly like this detail because I feel it's a bit redundant because the elasticized cuffs will only be useful if the sleeve are to be wide, but since the sleeve are on the slim side, when you roll it up, it would stay up already. The only the only time where you need elasticized cuffs is when, let's say, let, look at this body jacket. Right? They don't look bad, but I just think the Gary the Gary flight suit looks better because of the lack of elasticized cuffs. Yeah, the Gary jumpsuit. I'm gonna get it one day. I love that thing, but it's just these pieces are incredibly pricey. I think the Gary jumpsuit's like. $4,000, so it's a lie that I understand, but yeah, I'm gonna get it one day. I'm gonna get that Gary jump too. I want to expose my butt. So I already talked about material in the other video, but I, I forgot something. I want to talk about the look of the TE material. So TE is 90%, 97% cotton, 3% elastane. So it's not the cleanest of look, meaning there are wrinkles at weird spots everywhere because the material is more structured, it's heavier, it's not smooth like a silk, poly blend, or visco shirt. So that could be a turn off to some of you. If you are having a big issue with that, you should look for the poly blend version. I talk about the measurement, but I will repeat it because this is a size 48 women. The only problem with that is, oh, 48 is extra, extra large, which translates roughly to a medium men. The only problem again is the rise. I just, you know, common sense didn't hit me before I buy. It was just the overflowing excitement of finally finding the jumpsuit in my price range that I just have to buy it. So before I get into what wearing it is like, one of my fears in the beginning was looking too wide in this because I don't have the skinniest of frame and I particularly hate when my body stretch out the main body too wide. 
So um, let's talk about the practical aspect first and then we'll talk about aesthetic and then how it makes me feel. So I have worn this jumpsuit for about 10, 20 times now as jumpsuit, but not for a very long time because it's been very hot in Boston. There was this one hot day where I was in the high 80 and I was, dude, I was wearing it in the purpose of just doing research. I put it on for an hour and my back started sweating, my neck my legs my whole body was just sweating profusely it was just so insulated and when i took it off i felt this fresh air and it just felt amazing my plan right now is that if i find a better deal for the men's version for the size large i would sell this use that money and get the correct gender you know like it looks great now but i want that comfort i want that high rise that i believe is on the men because on my friend Swan, you can see that it's high rise. He got the men version, I got the women. When I wear this jumpsuit, I never needed to use any of the pockets on the bottom half because it's already there. It's just so close to my arm. Like there's no need to go down further. Aesthetically speaking, the jumpsuit looks great from the front, but the back, it's really lacking. Other than the four silver hardware on the pockets, they're very standard looking. I wish Rick had added the signature back strap. That would have added a little nice touch to the jacket, to the jumpsuit from the back. On my Klaus jacket, in the early version, in the leather version, they had this on the back. Imagine if you added that onto this jumpsuit. That would be incredible. And it would be incredibly useful for the practical aspect with airflow. If it gets too hot, reach back, zip it up, airflow go in. The front still look great, but you get airflow from the back. The new jumpsuit, the Tommy jumpsuit, they had the butt flap. You could add that to this too. That would look amazing. I'm all for that. Rick, the team, if you're listening, just add all of these details I just listed. Speaking of the Klaus jacket, I haven't forgot about my Klaus tech shoulder jacket. I will make, I will make that video, I think. I made three so far. I talked about the detail and the material. It just, I've lost the juice to talk about it. I've gotten so many new clothes that I'm not particularly more excited to talk about, but I just, I've lost the juice to talk about the tech shoulder clothes jacket. I don't know why, but I will force myself to talk about it because it is a great jacket and I believe I'm the only YouTuber that has it. I don't know if anybody else has it. I know a girl who has all three colorway, but she's, I don't think she's on YouTube, so I will make content about it because I believe in spreading the gospel of Rick Owens onto this shit platform. And I must reiterate this, I, whenever I wear this as a jumpsuit, I will only wear with the Kiss boot. They do not look good with anything else. If you wear these flight suit with a pair of Crocs, it does not look good, despite how great the Crocs are. It just, they look incredible with the Kiss boot. They don't look good with anything else. They look decent with my Guidi, but they don't look as good as the Kiss boots. If you wear this as a jumpsuit, I would recommend getting a pair of Kiss boots. You probably already own a pair. If you're gonna, if you're this deep into Rick Owens, you definitely own a pair of Kiss boots. And how it makes me feel. Whenever I wear this jumpsuit as a full flight jumpsuit, I feel incredibly fashion forward whenever I wear it. It gives me this confidence. With the flight suit, I just feel incredibly fashion forward. I feel like I'm participating in high fashion which is a great feeling that not a lot of clothes, or not all clothes, give to me. Uh, to end this video, I'm just gonna reiterate some stuff, but you know, you can get off this video now if you want, but I love these jumpsuits. They're so, so good. I can't say enough good things about these jumpsuits. I'm very, very content with it. The material, the fit, the look, the vibe, everything is immaculate. If you have the money, please go for it. If you have the 2K, go for it. They're, they're amazing. And even if you're just into the Bauhaus trouser, get these instead. So you can always wear a Bauhaus trouser, but if you change your mind one day that you wanna wear a jumpsuit, you can, you get that option. But if you just get the Bauhaus trouser, you don't have that options. And you know, I've said it before, we like options. On this channel, we like options. This is just one of those pieces where I'm incredibly proud to have in my closet. Every time I walk by it, I just run my hand through it. If I'm free, I would just wear it around the house. Just, I feel so happy. I feel so empowered whenever I wear them. I'm still working on the kink to the jogger aspect, but do I wish this was wide? Yes, but I'm okay with the joggerness here and there. Like there are moments where I'm like, oh, I hate this shit. But what, what's that popular saying? Uh, a clock is right twice a day. You know. Anyway, my name is Makassi. I think if we were to combine these two videos, which I might do for next week so I don't have to edit anything else, I think it's about like an hour 30 minutes something, which 
which which is what I promise in my I always get what I want video. What I can tell you right now is that video is gonna be at least an hour long. I always I always deliver on my promises, okay? But yeah, um, beautiful, beautiful garment. I love it so much. I can't wait to possibly sell this and get the right version with the men or get the leather version. I do love it, but I don't have 5K to spend right now, but never know. You never know what the future holds. You just have to be optimistic. You just have to be open, be ready to act. So if God were to throw me a fishing net or however that saying go, you know, if the leather goes on sale, I will certainly get it. If I see a better version, if I see the men version, I will get that, get rid of this, use this money, get that, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. I love you. Bye-bye.